Okay, everyone. I'm going to go over this Evaluating Credible Sources worksheet. Um, so make sure before you watch the rest of this video that you have taken the time to fill out the worksheet yourself. If you haven't done this yourself, stop the video now, go back to the worksheet, fill it out, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so what this worksheet is asking you to do is to evaluate the credibility of these four sources on violent video games. And you have this little checklist here to make sure um, that you're determining if it's credible. So let's look at this first one, this Brad Bushman, Do Violent Video Games Play a Role in Shootings piece? Um, so first, when I open it up, I see that this is um, a piece on CNN. Um, so CNN is a news website. They also have opinion pieces. Um, so this is not a scholarly journal. Remember, the best type of source is a scholarly journal. It's not that. That doesn't mean I can't use it. It just means I have to be a little bit skeptical. Um, the next thing on here is I want to know who is the author and is the author an expert on the topic. So if I go back, the author is this guy, Brad Bushman. If I scroll through here, I look for some information about who Brad Bushman is. Usually there's like a bio. Oh, look, here's his picture. Usually there's like a bio at the top or the bottom of the article, but CNN doesn't have that this time. So I don't have any bio of him. He does kind of talk about himself a little bit. He says, my colleagues and I found, and he says other researchers indicating that he's a researcher, but I still don't know that much about him. Um, so I could Google him, Brad Bushman. So this is a Google search for Brad Bushman. And see, here's more pictures of him. But all this stuff comes up. He's a PhD. He's a professor at The Ohio State University. He's a professor of communication and psychology. Um, there's all this stuff in, published in Psychology Today, um, stuff, research on video games, another questionable study by Brad Bushman, okay, here's someone who doesn't like him, um, he gave a TED Talk, so, alright, this guy looks, looks pretty legit, he's a professor, he's been published, look at all these other professors who get published with him, um, so he seems pretty reliable. So, for that second thing, does the author have credentials? I would say yes. The website is .com. Of course it's .com because it's a news company, so it would be a .com for company. Um, CNN, it's a trustworthy news source. Again, it's not as good as a medical journal or a scholarly journal, but it's, it's not terrible. So even though it's .com, I'm okay because it's a news website. Um, then our next thing is the article objective, subjective, or somewhere in between. So it even says at the top here, see, it says that this is an opinion piece. Um, this is in the op-ed section of the website. See, this opinion part is highlighted. Um, so this is an opinion-based piece, which means it should be subjective. He's making an argument. He's writing sort of a persuasive essay for CNN. Um, so this is definitely his opinion. But his opinion is based on something. He provides evidence for his opinion. So what I can do is I can filter out the parts of this article that are his opinion and look for the parts of this article that are fact. Um, I could also maybe end up using some of his quotes, um, his opinion-based quotes, but I would have to be kind of careful about that because this is clearly very subjective, it's clearly very biased. Um, but there are things in here that I could use, like he cites his own research here and he has a link. Um, he has links to other researchers, another research link another research link. So even if I don't use this piece exactly, I might use some of the things that he's linking to. Um, here's another link. Um, and these might end up being more useful. So overall, this is a useful source. It has some problems, mainly that it's biased. Um, but I could still end up using it either as a source itself or as a place to find other sources. Okay. So the next one, Video Game Addiction, takes me here. Now instantly this website kind of throws me off just because the design looks not very sophisticated, which indicates to me that it might be um, not as professional as some of the other sites that I would want to use. So I'm a little, I'm a little thrown off um, by it. It's .org. Um, .org generally means it's some kind of nonprofit organization. In this case, they look like some kind of video game addiction support nonprofit. That doesn't mean it's reliable. In fact, these people are probably pretty anti-video games because they don't like video game addiction. Um, so, I don't know. 
Um, but one thing that's really concerns me is that I don't see an author. Like there's no author name. And then if I go to the home page, there are no author names. There's this phone number, but I don't see an address. I don't see any contact information. There's this thing sponsored by the CRC Health Group. I don't know who they are. CRC Health Group. Never heard of them. Um, computers looking for CRC Health Group. Oh, okay. So they they do addiction, addiction-based treatment. CRChealth.com. Okay, this looks a little bit more legit than that first website. Here's some, there's some actual names, there's an actual, there's an address. Um, still, as I'm not getting a really good feeling about this site. But, like the first site, there are some references in here. So, like, if I look at this... Right, like they do reference researchers Anderson and Bushman. There's our guy Bushman again. He wrote that CNN piece. Um, so I see references to Anderson and Bushman. I see a theoretical model, general general aggression model. I could look that up. Um, so I think what this is helping me do is this is telling me to look for this 2002 study and look at the general aggression model. But um, I wouldn't use this in and of itself. It's just it just doesn't seem legitimate enough. I'm, I'm not really trusting it. But I could maybe look up some of the things it says and find some information and find some of that information on my own. Um, so looking back, this is not a scholarly journal. The author is unknown. Um, it's .org, um, and it's subjective. It's um, making an argument um, about video game addiction. Uh, so I would, I would overall argue this is not a reliable source. But I might look up some of the things it references. All right, next one. Video Game Violence, a review of the empirical literature. So when you see a title that says a review of the literature, that means basically they're going to look at all the studies that are out there and they're going to summarize all the studies. So these types of review of the literature studies tend to be very, very helpful for you because it's basically they wrote a research paper about the topic. Um, so let's go there. Video Game Violence, a review of the empirical literature. Okay. So this is from a scholarly journal. This is from the journal Aggression and Violent Behavior. Um, so that's a good thing. That's a yes. I like that it's from a scholarly journal. Notice that it's 1995 for the PDF. I could search and see if I can find the full text elsewhere. Um, but even if I can't, I can always cite the abstract. The abstract is a one paragraph summary of the article. And I can always use stuff from the abstract. It's not as good as the full article. Um, but for the level of research that I'm doing as a high school student, the abstract um, is still useful to me. Um, so one thing I would notice here, this is looking great. They, they have these two authors that I could look up. They're both, they're being published in journals. They're both professional researchers. Um, so yes, scholarly journal. The authors have credentials. Um, it's from, I mean, Science Direct is just a catalog of scholarly journals. So it's from a good website. The article should be objective because it's a scholarly journal. Um, but one thing I am going to point out about this one is notice the publication date. It was published in 1998. Um, so a review of the literature in 1998 is not as useful as a review of the literature in, say, 2008. Um, because you'll notice that their main argument um, from the abstract says that Exposure to video game violence increases aggressive behavior. So, okay, so video games make you aggressive. However, the paucity, that means very little, the paucity of data coupled with the variety of methodolo methodological problems and inconsistencies in these data clearly demonstrate the need for additional research. So, in other words, they're saying research says video games cause violence. However, the studies aren't that good and we need more research. But they said this in 1998. They said, we need more research in 1998. So there might have been more research done since then. Um, so it's a, little hard, it's a little hard to use this because the study has become outdated um, at this point. So then our fourth source, also from the Science Direct database, 
Um, this one is from the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology. So good, it is a um, scholarly journal article. Published in 2007, which for scholarly research, that's pretty recent, um, within the last 10 years. Um, and the effect of video game violence on physiological desensit desensitization to real life violence. Oh, and hey, look, here's our guy, Brad Bushman, who apparently is the number one video game guy out there right now. Um, so this piece has the abstract and even better has the full article so you can read the actual the full thing um, and you can look at everything that they cited which can be really really helpful because um, you can find all of these other references that they have um, this is an awesome awesome source this is the best source that we found um, it is from a scholarly journal the authors have credentials it doesn't really matter what the website is because it's from a journal um, it should be objective because it is from a journal um, so this is this is our best best thing that we've got going. In terms of reading this type of article, I would start with the abstract because that's a summary. Really break down the abstract so that you get it. Look up the words you don't know. Really read the abstract closely. After that, I would go through the introduction, and then I would skim down to. There should be some kind of area that's called like discussion of findings. Yeah, see discussion. I would read the discussion, and I would read the conclusion. The other stuff I can just skim. The part I'd really skim would be this part where they talk about um, the math that they used, um, because here they're, they're just talking about the like really complex methodologies that they used um, for their study, which at this point in your academic career, you don't need to know all this stuff, so I, would, I wouldn't really read this stuff closely. Um, when you are doing graduate work, then you can learn about how all that how all that stuff goes. So okay, as you can see, we've gone through four sources um, that all of them were useful, but the most useful ones were probably the CNN op-ed. Again, it's an opinion piece, so be a little wary, but could still be useful. Um, and then also this 2007 journal piece. Um, now, one thing I would note is this guy Brad Bushman is everywhere. I'm curious to see what else is out there that he didn't write, because I don't want my whole paper to just be stuff from Brad Bushman. Um, but it is true, usually, that there's a handful of professors who are leaders in a field. So when you start seeing the same professors' names over and over again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That just means you've found the, the leading experts um, in, on your topic. All right, so that should give you a little bit of information about how to evaluate and use sources. Again, journal articles are the best, then probably stuff from the newspapers, and always use your brain to figure out if you think it's legitimate and if you trust the person who's giving you the information.